This is Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Welcome to Bryant-Denny Stadium, home of the Crimson Tide. This place is charged up and ready for a big game today. And a rivalry like this is what makes college football great. Yeah, the tradition and the history, but right here, right now, there's great intensity. This is why these guys came to these schools to play in games like this. And so we'll see a squad from the SEC, the Auburn Tigers, taking on the sixth-ranked team in the land, the Alabama Crimson Tide. 3A Sports College Football. I'm Chris Fowler here in the booth with Kirk Herbstreit. I think we've talked long enough, Kirk. Let's get this game going. Alabama will kick it off to get us underway. He's going to return it from near the goal line. Makes it to the 16. That's good coverage there. The Auburn Tigers offense going to get the chance to start this game off. So here we go. Just about every man, woman, and child in this state holding their breath. There's nothing quite like the Iron Bowl's intensity. Well, Chris, you and I love college football. We love the rivalries. And this is a game that we know so much typically is at stake, not just in the rankings, but just within this state. There's such a living history to this rivalry game, Kirk. They began playing back in 1893 and so many dramatic chapters since then. You know, growing up in the Big Ten region, I always had an appreciation for the Iron Bowl, watching Auburn and Alabama every year. But really, it wasn't until 1996, my first year on college game day, when you and I were down there. Watched it firsthand. It was my first experience in seeing it. And there's just nothing like watching Auburn and Alabama in person. It's early, but this crowd is fired up. Listen to this noise here. This is going to be tough for the visitors today. He's a wide open receiver, complete. Solid gain there. Moves the ball out to the 32. That's exactly what you want to see here from this offense. A big third down conversion. Offensive line did their job, giving a quarterback enough time. Great read, good execution, throws the ball accurately. And now you got some momentum going here on this opening drive. Auburn getting set with a first and ten now. Caught in the backfield. It's Lambert Smith. They bring down the receiver, but that's a nice gain on that play. Boy, really nice throw here to the slot receiver, and I love the quickness that he has after the catch. He's essentially a running back playing at that slot position. That's how dangerous he is after he makes a catch. Important second down play coming up. And there's the handoff. And he will be stuffed for no gain. What a job at the line of scrimmage by this defense. Looked like a no-brainer. Second and short. Easy first down. No. Denied. Stopped. Bring up third down. The offense now looking at a third and short in their own 40. Trying to keep this drive going. Can he make it to the marker? Tackled behind the line. It's a loss of two. Things just appeared to be a bit out of sync from the get-go on that one. Give credit to the front seven of that defense for staying in the proper lanes and getting to the ball carrier, not let him dance around and make something out of nothing. Punt team ready to boot it away. He's on to kick it away, helping his team with field position. And we'll see what he can do on the return. And the coverage team able to bring the returner to the ground. So Alabama's offense out there for their first possession. And here we go, Kirk, this matchup on the edge that's going to go a long way to deciding this game. An elite wide receiver and a guy who doesn't believe anybody can beat him. This is going to be like a boxing match where it's an all-out battle. Two extremely gifted athletes competing on every snap. Better get your popcorn ready. You'll recall the last time they played, it was the Crimson Tide making just enough plays, Kirk, to pull out a close victory. And Chris, let's face it, that's what the Iron Bowl is supposed to be about. No matter who wins the game, it's always a lot of fun when it comes down to the final few minutes. I got a feeling it's going to be like that again today. They'll run it from the gun. Eludes a tackle. Tough running that breaks a tackle, picks up the first down. Chris, I don't know, there's just something about that Bama uniform. When they run the football, it just feels right. It's a combination of having those big offensive linemen 
a really physical approach at the line of scrimmage and backs that are able to pick up first downs like that right there. Beautiful play. Thrown quickly, caught in the right flat. Any good offense has to have a reliable, quick to intermediate passing game. Even though that wasn't enough for the first down, it's plays like this that help you sustain drives and not get stuck with third down and long. Second down play coming up. Looking downfield, it's Milrow. Pass ball is incomplete. There was a lot of contact. No penalty brings up third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out the punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, he's unable to hold on to the football. So off the incompletion, it sets up a third down and three. Send the back in motion. In the third and short, they'll try to throw for it. Caught over the middle. It's Prentice. Tackle made at the 41. That's first down yardage. Ooh, that was pretty. The receiver broke down his defender on that curl against man-to-man -man coverage. That's how you win one-on-ones. This Alabama offense is moving quickly down the field. Grab behind the line, it's Haynes. One thing I love about this back is how he gets involved in the passing game. Nice catch here. Second down after that run on the previous play. Quarterback drops back from the shotgun, looking for a receiver. Grab near the sticks, it's Miller. They've got it, but that completion good enough for first down yardage. Well, the running back that time just kind of sneaks out of the backfield and shows his hands on that nice catch. How aggressive do you get on first and ten? Looking to throw it again. Fires it to the wideout. He pulls it in for a big game. He moves the ball to the seven-yard line. Offense has a first and goal now. Well, you can tell the quarterback knew exactly what he wanted to do with the football. He was going to that end route no matter what. He hits it for a nice game. The tied offense line up here on first and goal. To the air. It's Milrow. He's got it near the end zone. He's swarmed by the defense. Love the timing here between the quarterback and his receiver. Pick up some positive yards, and I continue to be impressed with just the, the chemistry between these two. A solid first down gain sets the ball up close to the goal line, and they finish it off here on second and goal. Offense moving receivers around now before the snap. All the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. And Kirk, how important is that to get off to a positive start to draw first blood in a rivalry game like this? Well, Chris, as you know, in a rivalry game, there's so much emotion. So to be able to put a touchdown on the board first just sets the tone for a big day. So they'll try to add to the lead now with the PAT. PAT is good, so it's 7-0. Now the kickoff team is out on the field. He'll return it from inside the 5. And he stopped at the 19. Good job by the coverage team. And the Auburn offense trots back onto the field. They were forced to punt last time. Can they get this offense going finally? Get some points out of this possession. And he's got his man open downfield. Moves the ball out across the 30, and that's good for a first down. Great execution here by this offense against zone coverage with a curl route. Hit that last step in your drop. You see where you want to go with it. Put it right on his shoulder for a first down. There's a first and 10 play. Back to pass. It's Thorne. Receiver makes the catch. 
They bring him down at the 44. That's a solid gain, getting closer to midfield now. Boy, a great slant by the receiver. What I love is the quarterback found the window that he wanted to make the accurate throw. First and ten play coming up. Offense looking to throw the ball. Fires it to his target. And he's got it. Tackle finally made, but it's a huge gain. They'll spot it at the 34. The defense does a nice job of forcing the quarterback here to be patient by playing zone. They run a crossing route. Defense is there, but not able to break up the catch. Auburn getting set with a first and ten coming up. They're going to run it. Tackled behind the line. It's a loss of two. So Alabama will take the lead into the quarter break here. Let's check out the stats now through the opening period. Plenty of time for some plot twists here as we begin the second quarter. Second down play coming up for this offense. And the quarterback looking to make a play through the air. It's an out route. The catch made. They bring him down quickly. A short pitch and catch to get a little bit closer to the marker. Anytime a quarterback and a receiver are in sync, you've got a chance to make a very successful play. Great job here by the offense. So the offense getting set. This is not where you want to be against this defense. Third and long. Try to catch the defense with the draw. Fighting for yardage, but the defense stops him just short of that first down marker. Now pass on the field goal attempt. The offense on the field going for it on fourth down. Scanning the field, it's Thorne. Quick throw to his receiver. Makes the catch, and that is enough for a first down. They've got him, but they convert on fourth down, and the drive keeps going. Oh, the defense has got to be kicking themselves. Fourth down and long, and they give up a big play over the top for a conversion. Oh, that one hurt. Auburn now operating in the red zone. And the back gets the football. The junior able to bring him down quickly. Well, another short game for this offense on the ground, and you got to give a lot of credit to the defense. They have really negated that aspect of this offense the entire first half and really making them one-dimensional. And if that doesn't change, I don't know how they get back into this game. Coming to the line on second down, this is important. They want to avoid a third and long. Quarterback drops back. We're going to test the secondary. Oh, and he can't hang on. What an opportunity to score there. Instead, incomplete and third down. An important third down conversion coming here in the red zone. Drops back, looking to throw for it on third down. And it's a touchdown! But wait, looks like there's a flag on the field. Let's find out if this one's going to count. See if the offense can overcome that holding penalty. And the crowd coming to life here, trying to help this defense down in the red zone. Tackle just short of the goal line at the one. What a run. Look, I realize on any play call, when it's properly executed, it can go to the house for a touchdown. But the runs that really make a game plan work are the ones where you get just what you need. And he barely got the first down, but he got it. First and goal for the offense. To throw, it's Thorne. The pocket breaking down. Ball lands harmlessly out of bounds, but at least he avoided the sack here. That was important. And I talk to defensive coordinators all over the country and they're quick to point out the term affecting the quarterback. 
they, they, they kind of almost get offended when you want to talk to him about sacks. Sometimes it's just about getting into his face, affecting his vision. It's exactly what they did right here. They pressure him and get him the loss back to the seven-yard line. This defense is playing inspired football with their backs near their own goal line. An incompletion, now a sack. What would the offensive coordinator come up with here on third down? The offense has been moving backwards here. Now a long way to go on third and goal. From the gun, he looks for an open man. And it's caught. Touchdown, Auburn. So what happened there? The defense just lost track of the tight end down the goal line. I, I don't know. I don't know if they were just so focused on defending the goal line they just completely forgot about the tight end. That'll be probably the easiest touchdown throw and catch of the game we see all day. And they'll set up for the PAT. And he knocks it right through. Here's the kickoff team now, set to boot this one away. So no return here. He takes a knee in the end zone, and they'll begin the drive at the 25. So here comes the Alabama offense back onto the field. The last drive, the passing game, very effective. Moved them right down the field. And the defense make adjustments. Runner scoots out of bounds after gaining decent yards. Chris, it's so much fun to watch the athleticism at the wide receiver position nowadays. The ability to make plays on the outside is extraordinary. And it brings a certain toughness, too, to catch a mile. Second down after that run on the previous play. They'll try the ground game here with the running back. They get him down, but the junior with an excellent run there. Well, I know people want to talk about the spread, and Alabama's offense has changed over the years, but at the end of the day, with this coaching staff, it still comes down to the line of scrimmage and the ability to pound the rock. Think about the backs they've had in recent years. Mark Ingram and Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry, Jameer Gibbs most recently. This is an offense that still wants to control things up front and beat you down. Second down after that previous play. Fakes the handoff here, looking to throw it. Couldn't find anybody open and just has to throw it away. Challenging spot for the offense. It's third down and long from the 45. Dropping back, looking to throw for the first down. And he finds a wide open receiver. They forgot about him downfield. They're not going to get him. He's in. Touchdown. Tie. That's just nice execution. Quarterback and receiver per perfectly in sync that time. Yeah, you can see why route running is one of the most underrated attributes of a receiver. It's easy to get caught up on their ability to catch or their vertical or their speed. But nothing substitutes for someone who can create separation like this before the ball's even thrown. And now the try here for the extra point. The extra point is good, so it's 14-7. Kick 
kickoff team is on the field. Let's see if they give the returner a chance to bring this one back. And here's the return from inside the five. And he stopped at the 20. Tried to make something happen, but that's good coverage there. And the Auburn offense back out on the field. They punched it in the last possession. Can they do it again, or will this defense make some adjustments to get a stop? Tackle, but first down. Keeping it on the ground here. They got him down out near the 40. Great job by the offensive line here, opening up some holes and giving the running back room to run on first down. Plays like this can open up the playbook for the play caller, allow him to make that defense think, are they going to run? Or maybe play action, maybe throw the ball downfield. Offense getting set. Second down play here. Handoff here from the shotgun. Runs through the defender. I'll bring him down, but the spin cycle put on that defender. My goodness. Well, that is a first down and a definitive way of getting a good push up front. And this back, I tell you, every single year on the Plains, Auburn always has a great back, and this guy is no different. Auburn getting set with a first and ten now. They're going to run it here. The game is two yards, so it's second and eight. For the defense coordinator this week, all week telling us about gap integrity, not giving this running back any creases at all. Really sound defense on that play. Second down here. Time for one more play before the two-minute warning. So we reach the two-minute warning as this offense tries to take the lead here before halftime. What's the play call here on second down for this offense? Offense switches it up here, looking to throw the ball now. Grab down the middle. It's Burton. It's a big gain across midfield down inside the 35. You know, we talked this week with the offensive coordinator about what makes this receiver so special. He kept referring to his route running. Here's an example of that. Great route, enough separation to give the quarterback a nice lane to throw the football. Looking to pass, it's Thorne. Makes the catch downfield into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. Perfect timing here by this quarterback. Great read, puts the ball where his man can make a play on it, and they're an extra point away from tying this game up. Here's the point after attempt. And the PAT is good. Kickoff team has come on the field now to send this one away. He's going to bring this out a few yards deep in the end zone. Tackled at the 13. Not great field position to start the drive. Here comes the Alabama offense onto the field. The passing game was clicking beautifully in the last drive. Right down for a touchdown. Let's see if they can do it again. But they don't make the connection. That one is incomplete. Well, this quarterback and his receivers have got to get on the same page. They've got to find a rhythm if they want to move the ball down the field. Now it's second down here. Off play action, he's looking to throw. Finds his man, it's Adams. And heads out of bounds after a decent game. Quarterback looks downfield to make this throw. He wants to be able to get the ball to be able to pick up enough yards for a first down. But instead, he gets the ball at least underneath to the track route and gets some positive yards. 
Interesting play call here. Third and short inside their own 20. They want to get this drive going, or a punt could give the opponents excellent field position. Takes it out to the 44. That's good for a first down. Well, the defense knows Kirk might take more than one tackler to bring this tight end down. Well, anytime as a defense, you always want to rally to the football. But against this guy, you especially want to do that because you saw he breaks through that first arm tackle. I thought he might be able to pick up even more yards, but good job of getting extra hats to the ball. Back to pass. It's Milrow. Makes the throw across the middle of the field. It's a big game deep in the plus territory. They'll spot it near the 30. That's a great job of working the middle of the field by this quarterback, and he picks up big yards. The offense is clicking, and the defense just searching for answers now. First down, looking to throw the football. Short pass, finds the tight end. And the offense will now quickly spend a timeout. Boy, that's pretty good coverage here by this defense. Not much of a window to throw this ball into, but the quarterback's accuracy and the size of the tight end picks up a nice game. Caught over the middle, it's Miller. Offense stops the clock with their second timeout to talk strategy. So now it's third and short from the 23. Potential four down territory. Let's see what the third down call is. Looking to pick up the first down through the air. Oh, and he dropped it. You don't see that often from this guy. Brings up fourth down. Hey, the good news is here, Chris, they're still in field goal range, and they didn't cost themselves any points. But they could have more. You've got to be thinking about going for this on fourth and short. So on fourth down, they will settle for a field goal attempt. Trying to connect from 40 yards out. The field goal is good. And they've regained the lead. Well, Chris, it's a nice kick here to polish off that drive with at least three points up on the board. So they settled for three here, and now the kickoff. See if the opposing offense can answer before halftime. Return starts from inside the five. And the coverage team able to bring him down. And the Auburn offense is back out on the field. They've got a choice here in the final minute. Do they get aggressive, try to cut into this lead, or play it safe and point toward the second half? It's complete. What a grab near the sideline. Heads out of bounds as a short gain on the play. Well, this is called settling down in his own defense, just kind of finding that soft spot. So not only does this tight end show that he's got great athletic ability and great size, here he shows that he understands coverage by sitting down in that hole, giving the quarterback a nice target, able to pick up that first down. Grab down the middle. It's Burton. And a timeout is called to talk strategy. Close game here as we approach halftime. Chris, it's so easy to get excited about the receivers on the outside and their ability to make big plays, but the slot receivers are just as exciting, especially with their finesse, quickness, and the ability to make guys miss in the middle of that field. And a quick timeout call by the offense after the play. Auburn getting set with a first and 10 coming up. Looking downfield, it's Thorne. He makes the grab. And the game just good enough for a first down. The defense spreads all over the field playing zone, trying to make this quarterback make a mistake by throwing it into coverage. But he finds the soft spot on the curl and picks up a first down. The offense comes back out there. Not much time left. Perhaps just time for a couple plays before the half. Throws it to the right. Finds the receiver wide open. In a big game before he goes out of bounds, the offense keeps churning, gets a fresh set of downs. Well, that's exactly what you need to do as a receiver in these kind of situations near the end of the half. Get some positive yards, but also stopping the clock is just as important. So on first down, the field goal unit will come out there trying to get three points before the half. And it sails right through the middle of the uprights. Solid kick. And that will tie things up as we head toward halftime. Snap, the hold, the kick, everything there perfect to put three points up here for the offense.
So here's the kickoff now. Offense settling for three, tacking on a little bit of momentum before the halftime break. They'll return it from inside the 10-yard line. And they get him down in what will be the final play of this first half. And that will do it for the first half here. Kevin Connors now has our halftime update. Thanks so much, guys. And I need not tell you, rivalry games always bring out a ton of emotion. And no surprise, we saw just that in the first half today. Toughest job inside that stadium right now might just be the scoreboard operator after all those first downs and touchdowns. Big plays have defined this one thanks to two of the best receiving core in all of college football. Let's see if these defenses can adjust and make the necessary chess moves. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how the fight between Alabama and Auburn plays out. And they'll kick it away now to get this third quarter underway. And he'll lead the kickoff right there. He'll start from the 25. Here comes the Crimson Tide offense onto the field. It's a quarterback keeper. That's a solid game. Moves the ball to the 29. Well, if you're going to run the read option, you're going to have to keep your eye on that defensive end. If he collapses down inside to the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself as a quarterback to the outside. Now, if he stays outside, you're going to go ahead and leave it in the running back's belly. In this case, he pulled it and got some good yards himself. They tackle him behind the line, a loss of four. Well, they run it right into a blitz, and that linebacker was coming downhill, Kirk. Man, what a time to call that blitz here by the defensive coordinator. And you're right, he shoots right through that A-gap. Really, the back had nowhere to go. By the time he got the ball in his hands, the linebacker's right in his face. A tough situation with the offense. Third and long from their 25. Let's see if the defense brings some heat here. It's caught downfield. Tackled at the 44, but good enough for a first down. They bring him down with the junior quarterback showing off the cannon. As the tight end flex out into the slot, looking for a matchup there, Kirk. Well, it is a matchup because he has the size where he's very difficult to be able to match up for his safety. And he's got the speed to be able to outrun a linebacker. That's why they like to flex him out like that and be able to pick up nice big gains like this. Trying to flex the ground game here. Running back takes the hand off. Brought down, but the game moves the ball all the way to the plus 42. Boy, how about that play, Chris? That thing just opened up the back shot through there with great acceleration. What a pickup there on first down. This Alabama offense is moving quickly down the field. QB decides to keep it here. And he's got it already past the first down marker. Tackle made, but the game moves the ball to 30. Man, is he pretty to watch run this option. He is so dangerous with the threat to run or to throw. This time he keeps it himself, and you can see how much ground he eats up with that kind of speed. Alabama getting set with a first and 10 coming up. It's a quick grab, and the defense swarms not much of a gain on that completion. When you throw an out route against man coverage, man, it puts a premium on the receiver who can set up the defensive back to be able to still have room to get to the outside and be timed up with a quarterback. That was great execution. Second down after that run on the previous play. Gonna run it. It's Miller. And he's brought down, but he does have enough for the first down. Whew, how about that offensive line? That's just getting a hat on a hat opening just enough room for the back to be able to get through there for a big game. Alabama has now moved into the red zone. On first down, why not keep it on the ground? You know, in the era that we live in right now, everybody wants to spread the field around, try to create space, try to create one-on-one -on -one matchups, and the defense is countered over the years by trying to play out wide. But here's a great example of a defense. Has the ability to play wide, but still be solid at the line of scrimmage, not give up big run plays. Offense getting set. It's second down. From the shotgun, it's a handoff. It's a big game before he goes out of bounds. It'll move the sticks more than enough for a first down. You know, offensive linemen are just a certain breed. They're always going to do their job, no matter who's back there carrying the ball. I'll tell you what. 
they have a little bit more confidence when the person that's carrying the ball can break off some big time runs. That makes them block just a little bit harder knowing what he's potentially capable of doing. Zero running room stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Coming up, second down and goal. They'll try the option play here. And the defense there to smother that option play. Great job by the defense so far. It's third and goal from a long way out. Looking to throw. It's Milrow. Running out of time in the pocket. Touchdown, Bama. will take the lead in the second half. Well, they slow the game down with a long, grinding drive to produce a touchdown. That was impressive. What's impressive to me is the consistency. You know, it's one thing to hit a receiver and you score a big touchdown, but to be able to go and sustain drives and keep the sticks moving, that puts a lot on the quarterback and the execution of the offense, and man, did they make that look easy. So they'll try to add to the lead now with the PAT. PAT makes it a seven-point lead. The kickoff team is on the field to move this one away. Fields it just outside the goal line. And he's tackled at the 21. That's where the drive will start. And the Auburn offense is back out on the field now. Last possession produced a field goal. Let's see what they can come up with this time. And looking to throw now on first down. That's caught. It's Burton. You see more and more offenses in college football going to three receivers. And the slot receiver, a lot of times, can become the go-to guy. He gets mismatches against either safeties, a nickelback, or a linebacker walked out. And you can take advantage of it. And completion makes it second and short. And they'll give it to the back. Looks like Auburn will have the first down. Sometimes I almost get mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, the eyes that carry their feet to the open space, making people miss. I just love watching those guys do work. Big guys up front lined up. It's first down. Snags a quick throw. They bring him down after a short gain there. Just a good job here by the quarterback. Got the ball out to his receiver. His guy eats up some yards. They stay ahead of the sticks. The offense going with the hurry up. Dropping back. It's Thorne. That's the running back who makes the catch across the middle. And they wrap him up, but the gain is good enough for a first down. Well, it's so easy to get caught up in the receivers and the quarterback, and your eyes get lost. You forget about the running back. Nice catch and a first down for this offense. This Auburn offense is moving quickly down the field. Grab behind the line. It's Coleman. Defense reacts quickly, a very short gain on the play. This is an example of a quarterback and his offense just taking what the defense gives you. Not a huge play, but positive yards. The defense wants to give that throw to you. You take it, get the ball to your receiver, stay ahead of the sticks. Offense in hurry-up mode. Looking to throw again. That's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no flag, brings up third down.
sixth play of the drive coming up. Handing off on the draw play. Tackled behind the line. It's a loss of two. Chris, I'll be really honest with you. I don't know why they continue to try to run the football. I'm all about balance. I'm all about trying to make sure defense has to defend the run and the throw. But at this point in the game, they haven't been able to run the ball. They're going to have to go through the air if they're going to come back and take the lead in this game at some point. This one is out of bounds, and that'll give the offense great field position. Punt goes out of bounds. Looks like they'll spot it near the 15. Alabama's offense coming back onto the field. On that last touchdown drive, they just pounded away with the ground game. Let's see if that formula works again. Moves the ball out across the 30, and that's good for a first down. Of course, a nice job up front by the offensive line, but give the running back an assist for setting those blocks up before he's able to get downfield for the first down. Fresh set of downs for the offense. First down. So Alabama will take the lead into the quarter break here. You've reached the end of the third. Time is running out to cut into this lead. Let's check out the game stats before we go on. We're set now for the fourth quarter. Who is going to make the crucial plays to take home this W? And in first down, they go right back to him. And the runner brought down right at the 38 yard line. That's exactly how you want to start this drive, working with the lead in the fourth quarter. Take as much time off this clock as possible. That's a great way to get this drive started. Second down after that run on the previous play. On the ground, it's Miller. A change of direction. The stop made at the 45, but enough for a first down. You know, sometimes, Chris, we get caught up in the speed and the quickness, and obviously those are important assets to have as a running back. But what you just saw from this guy, and he's had a pretty good day, is his ability to break tackles in the open space. And he gets through those arm tackles. You can see what he's capable of doing after being able to shake free with the speed that he has. Out of the shotgun, he'll hand it off. And they'll tackle him for a loss of five yards. Chris, I think we all kind of get caught up in third down. What, what's an offense doing on third down? But I think what's also important is how well do you defend first down. If you can hold your opponents to a short gain or a tackle for a loss, you throw the offense out of whack, and their game plan gets much more challenging to try to come up with that first down. Minimal gain brought down short of the marker. Chris, you know, the spread error over the years has always grown offensively, but what I've been always impressed with the defenses that really build their defense to play in space still have an ability to be sound at the line of scrimmage and defend a running game. It's exactly what we saw right there. Looking to throw it on third and very long. Quarterback moving out of the pocket, trying to create. To get him at the 42, good enough for a first down. These are the kind of plays that keep defensive coordinators up at night. You spend so much time putting your plan together to stop the pass, and then nobody accounts for the quarterback on a run. Alabama getting set for the first and ten now. Shotgun formation. Here's an inside handoff. The pickup is seven yards, now it's second and three. Boy, this guy just keeps playing good football. He's like a bowling ball out there. Gets low pad support, running over top of defenders. Just a pretty runner, and a big part of the reason they're enjoying this lead here in the fourth quarter. Offense getting set up. Here's second down. Catch made on the out route. Tackle made at the 24-yard line. This offense really threatening now. Chris, that's another nice pickup through the air. I, I thought they might be really just out to run the football here with the lead. But instead, they're electing to throw the football. Different routes, quarterbacks in rhythm. Really, it's almost an extension of their uh, passing game. First down and 10. To the air, it's Milrow. Tight end makes the grab. Tackled pretty quickly, but that is a decent game on the throw. 
That's the thing with this guy. You've got the ability to flex him out. He shows his versatility and what he can do from that slot position. He could be the quarterback safety blanket. Alabama now operating in the red zone. In the red area, it's Miller. They'll stop him behind the line for a loss of one. Well, I don't think the offensive line gave the back much of a chance at all. Now, give credit to the defense. It was almost like they were anticipating a run and got up close to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Fans of the defense got to be frustrated. The offense cannot be stopped here. Sticking with the running game. Got a lane. Can he get in? Doesn't quite get in, but it sets up a first and goal for this offense. I love it. Third down, the way this back is running, just keep feeding him the football, and he's going to come through for you. And he does here at a critical moment in his football game in the fourth quarter. Nice job. So it's first and goal. The offense will try to milk the clock and add points if they can. And he gets to the end zone. Touchdown, Crimson Tide. Well, the energy really building that trick. If they're not careful, this could get ugly. Chris, this offense has been impressive the entire game. And one of the great things about rivalry games is you'll never forget this kind of performance. Now the try here for the extra point. Extra point up and good. A two-touchdown lead here now in the fourth quarter. There's a the kickoff team. Let's see if they give the returner an opportunity to bring this back. And he takes this from inside the five. Stop at the 22. That's pretty solid coverage there. And the Auburn offense trots back onto the field. The last drive, they came up empty. Had to kick it away. Can they come up with something here? It's a highlight reel diving catch there. Tackle made, but a strong arm throw by the senior quarterback. Hey, it's a nice game here, and they get the first down to stop the clock. But late in the game, trailing by a couple scores, these receivers have got to be thinking about getting out of bounds as often as they can to preserve that clock to give them a real shot to come back to win it. To throw, it's Thorne. Tries the right, fired into a tight window and picked off. And he's got some open field ahead. And he steps out of bounds after the great pick. Solid return to set up his offense. Boy, would this quarterback love to have this one back. They're trying to work themselves back into this game here in the second half. And the defense comes up with a big turnover that could be the nail in the coffin. So here comes the Alabama offense back onto the field. The last drive, the ground game, was so successful. Ended in a touchdown. We'll see if the defense can respond to it this time. Man, just complimentary football, really, in a nutshell. They get this football back thanks to their own defense, creating that turnover, working with the lead like this. Really, it's all but over. Now the offense is just thinking about running the football and working that clock. Second down after that run on the previous play. Hand off to the back. They'll keep the clock moving. He stopped, but he gets a first down. You know, the thing that's really stood out today for this offense has been the balance. Now, they've gotten some yardage out of the running back. He's done his job. The offensive line is protected and given the quarterback a chance to be able to throw the football. He's been able to throw the football into the end zone. Now they're just looking to put on the finishing touches to win the game. First down and goal here. A touchdown just about puts this game on ice. The shotgun handoff here. And this one goes nowhere. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. And now it's the defense that calls timeout here, trying to get organized and preserve as much clock as possible. Handoff inside, looking for the touchdown. 
They'll stop him behind the line for a loss of one. And now a timeout taken by the defense trying to preserve as much clock as possible for their offense. Offense moving backwards here a long way from the goal line now. On third and goal, they'll try to run it in. Goes backwards, losing three yards there. And now it's the defense that calls timeout here, trying to get organized and preserve as much clock as possible. So the decision is to not go for it, but settle for three. Here comes the field goal team. And that kick right down the middle. Can't hit it any better than that. And that will extend their lead even further. I was watching this guy in pregame. He has got a strong leg. I'm surprised here he's able to put three points up here for the offense. After adding three more points to the lead, they're set to kick it off. Well, he thought about coming out, but instead takes a knee and will bring the football to the 25-yard line. And the Auburn offense back out on the field. Well, this has been a disappointment. They've had their doors blown off here, just playing for pride at this point. He flips it to the back across the middle, and he's tackled after the catch. I really like what this defensive coordinator is doing right now. He's got a nice lead to sit back. The most important thing is tackling this offense inbounds so that clock will keep ticking. They'll hurry to the line here with the clock running. Looking to throw. It's Thorne. Receiver looks it in. It's complete. He stopped just short of that first down marker, inches away from it. I love what the defense is doing here. Sitting back, giving up some plays underneath, tackling these guys inbounds, and just keep that clock rolling. Crucial third down play right here. Looking to pick up the first down through the air. From the pocket, delivers over the middle. They get him down at the 41, but that's good enough for a first down. Really good job here of converting by this offense. And let's face it, at this point in the game, because they have such a big hole to climb out of, they've got to be able to convert and come up with a new set of downs. They do it here. Now they got a real shot to cut into this lead. Now they come up to spike it to stop the clock. Getting set. Here's second down. There's the snap. Quarterback setting up to throw. He's got an open man downfield, and it's caught. Potentially a touchdown-saving tackle, but not before a long completion. Hey, listen, this game isn't over yet. The defense can't get too comfortable with this lead, and I know the coach isn't content with giving up plays like that at any point in the game. Auburn getting set with a first and ten now. And now they'll just clock it to freeze the time. Here's the second down play. To throw, it's Thorne. And he just throws the ball away there. Nobody open. Excellent coverage. Well, they don't connect here, but this is what you have to do. It's late in the game. You need points. You're behind. You got to take some shots. I'd go right back to it, try to find a matchup, and go to one of your receivers that can make a play for you. This was a promising drive, but back-to-back -back incompletions makes it third and ten. Quick throw to the left side, and he pulls in the catch. Tackle is made at the eight-yard line. It'll be first and goal right there. 